Episode 286, Call Me Stephen. Blair shook her head and said, If all of us were to leave, leaving him behind, I'm afraid that he'd be heartbroken. Roger let out a snort, feeling displeased. He's already treating you in this manner, so why do you still care about him? But the more bad things Roger said about him, the more Blair felt like telling Stephen. The reason she was hesitant was also the same reasons as what Roger said. With Roger saying them out loud, it was like she was facing the inner devil in her heart. Therefore, she instinctively became more inclined towards Stephen's side. You must think this through properly. If Stephen doesn't agree, we won't know what he'll do, Roger said. Blair looked at Catherine, who was grinding her teeth as if there weren't anywhere else around, and planted a kiss on her forehead. I won't let Stephen harm Catherine. Neither of them spoke for a while, and the silence went on for very long before Blair said again, Let me think about it. You can go back to forging. I'll make the decision tonight. Roger rubbed her head and said, I'll support you no matter what you want to do. Blair felt very touched and circled one arm around Roger's neck, pulling his head down and kissing on his lips. Roger's face instantly heated up. He then deepened the kiss. The kiss ended with Roger breathing heavily. His skin's temperature was higher than when he had just come out from the iron-smelting room. You... are you in heat again? Roger panted heavily and asked. Blair touched her swollen lips from the kissing, her heart tightening up. That can't be, right? It had only been over six months since she had given birth to Catherine. She hadn't stopped breastfeeding her either. Usually her period shouldn't be coming, right? However, the period was hard to fathom. It could really be that she was starting to ovulate again. Beastmen's sense of smell was very sharp. Given how Roger was so easily aroused, there was a very high chance that her period was coming again. Roger sniffed Blair and couldn't help but gulp, turning his head away with great difficulty. He took in a few breaths of fresh air and then said with a hoarse voice, Your scent is very alluring. I must hold on. We mustn't mate. It'll be bad if Blair gets pregnant with a female child. Ah. I don't want to go into heat, Blair said in annoyance. She walked over to a big tree that was like a water tower and knocked against it. A red patch quickly appeared on her forehead. Blair knocked against it again, but this time she knocked against a hot palm. Roger? Roger said, amused. Everyone else wishes to go into heat every day, but things are different for our family. Going into heat is a troublesome thing indeed. Ah, it is troublesome. Over in my world, it's a really big deal, Blair said. However, after having come to the Beastman world for three years, the number of times her period came was easily countable. She was really lucky. It's just nice that the white cotton is blooming. I'll go pick some for you, Roger said. Blair said, pick more. Pick enough for one year. All right. Roger took Catherine from her arms and played with her. He frowned and said, She's ignoring me as well. Shall I send the two of you back? Blair shook her head. I want to take Catherine out for a walk. She'll feel stuffy if she's cooped up at home. I'll be leaving then. Roger returned Catherine to her and they headed back home. Blair looked around. She had no idea where the leopard cubs had gone, so she could only go look for Stephanie. She had just arrived at Stephanie's place when she heard wailing sounds coming from inside. Blair was very scared and quickly carried Catherine on her back and left. She walked aimlessly around the village and unknowingly came to the cave the little snake lived in. Little snake? Blair's call resonated in the spacious, dark, and humid cave. It hadn't been long before the sound of scales rubbing against the floor rang out from inside the cave. Blair beamed and walked in. Little snake! 
a snake that wasn't very big appeared from the darkness, gradually standing up and turning into a young man with a long and slender figure. Mommy. Blair rocked Catherine and said, I've told you many times that when you change to your human form, you have to wear an animal skin skirt. Quickly go and put it on. The little snake was about to turn when he suddenly paused in his footsteps, turned back, and put his head close to Blair's body. Tss. Blair moved away. What's the matter? You smell so nice. The little snake's voice sounded a little stupid, and his red lips flicked out a long and slender tongue touching Blair's arm. His tongue shrank back into his mouth, and the little snake's expression turned into an intoxicated one like that of a drug addict. Blair was stunned. Was even the little snake able to smell the change to her body scent? Blair slapped the little snake's head and chided, Quickly go put on your clothing. The little snake swung his head hard and stood up straight, then turned and ran off with a swoosh. Blair assessed the cave's environment, meanwhile. It looked shabby as if no one stayed here. Her heart ached for him. Placing Catherine down on the grass pile, Blair tied her hair back and started to tidy up the cave. After quite a while, the little snake came out with his animal skin skirt on. Why did it take you so long to put on your clothes? Blair looked at the little snake strangely. The little snake grabbed onto his smooth red hair that hung down his shoulders, saying, I'm not too good at it. Blair smiled and said, Mommy can accompany you for a little longer today. Is there anything you want to eat? Why don't you go look for a nest of bird eggs and I'll make steamed eggs for you. Snake beast men rarely liked cooked food, but the little snake had eaten steamed egg when he was young. In his memories, it was an amazing delicacy. A large amount of saliva was instantly secreted in the little snake's mouth. Gulping, he said, I'll go out and play with mommy. All right. Blair gave it some thought and agreed. With her trip to the desert, she had no idea when she'd be able to see the little snake again. She should spend more time with him if she could. The little snake was overjoyed and quickly picked Catherine up, putting on the vest that was used to carry her. Catherine didn't even look up when she landed in a pair of unfamiliar arms. She continued chewing on her piece of wood. The two of them left the cave. The little snake carried Catherine on his back and led the way. Blair said, Little snake, walk slower. My feet hurt. The little snake instantly turned back to look at her, his gaze landing on Blair's fair and tender feet. He then turned back and squatted down in front of her. I'll carry you on my back. When Blair saw that the little snake wanted to carry her on his back, despite his small figure, she found it amusing. Where are you thinking of bringing me? Let's just find a clean and cooling piece of grassland. There's no need for you to carry me. The little snake said, The beast men in the village will kill me if they find me. I don't dare to let others notice me. Let's go outside the village. Blair was stunned and hesitated. It's very dangerous outside the village. The little snake immediately said, It'll be fine. I'll be very careful and not let wild beasts come close. Even if they come, I can defeat them. Blair understood that males of his age were very complacent as they had just obtained stronger abilities. Therefore, she shouldn't believe the little snake. However, she still agreed. Then you must protect Mommy well. Blair smiled. She still had her mate's protection. There was no way that her life would be in danger. Yes. The little snake beamed. Roger was picking cotton flowers in the village when his heart suddenly palpitated. His body trembled and he looked up. Blair! He rushed back home with the bag of cotton flowers.
When he didn't see Blair at home, he felt a stronger feeling that something was amiss. He was about to dash out of the stone castle when he noticed from the corner of his eyes that Stephen seemed perfectly fine. He hesitated and didn't say anything. He just turned to go out. If Blair was in any danger, she could summon Stephen. Since she didn't, she should be just looking for him. Roger had two leads. Firstly, there were Blair's footprints. Secondly, there was the spiritual connection that mates shared. For efficiency, Roger chose the second method. That was why he didn't notice any lead on his way. It wasn't until he didn't manage to find Blair, even after leaving the village, that he realized that she was in danger. It'd be delaying time to go back to find leads and to inform Stephen. Roger let out a furious bellow and ran even faster. When Blair was a sufficient distance away, Stephen also noticed that something was amiss. He searched around and realized that Roger, Blair, and Catherine were nowhere to be seen. Stephen was instantly enraged. He uncontrollably turned into his full beast form and charged out of the village. How? When the leopard cubs met him, they raised their heads and called out at him. When Stephen saw them, his body paused for a moment and his fury eased up a little. The children were still at home. Blair wouldn't leave them behind. He could have misunderstood things. Blair didn't abandon him. Stephen's snake figure quickly disappeared from the leopard cub's vision. They exchanged a few baffled glances and started talking amongst themselves. Eldest said, Did Stephen go out to hunt? Howl! Second said, It should be. Let's go back home to wait for the food. Howl! Third nodded. Howl! They then stood by the stove, planning to have some innards appetizers before their meal. However, they sat there until the sky turned dark, but the food still didn't come. The three lonely leopard cubs were sad for very long. Then they each caught food that they liked and had a feast. When Blair woke up, she saw a wooden roof. The air was hot and humid, making her feel sticky all over. You've woken up. The little snake's face appeared in her vision. Blair looked at the little snake's face and recalled the events that had taken place before she fainted. She sat up angrily. Little snake, what are you doing? Call me Stephen. The little snake placed his hand on her head and patted her gently. Blair was stunned and then broke out in goosebumps from his touch. She slapped off the little snake's hand. What did you say? Blair's gaze was full of doubt when she looked at the little snake. What was wrong with this kid? Could he have been possessed by Stephen? The little snake looked a little displeased, but he quickly restrained himself, looking at her with adoration and said, Blair, I'm Stephen. Slap. Blair slapped hard on the little snake's head, furious. The little snake tensed up his cold face, staring at Blair with his crimson eyes. His expression shared quite a strong resemblance with Stephen. It was just that he was too young and didn't have the disposition of a strong beast man like Stephen. But this was enough to astonish her. Blair looked around and found Catherine sleeping by her side. She felt a little more at ease. She had no idea where this place was and glared at the little snake furiously. She carried Catherine and got up, quickly walking out of the wooden house. The little snake didn't stop her and just followed quietly behind her. <laughs>